This is a continuous improvement movement reserved for the few with the grit to prove it. Everybody. Good morning, Calvin. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you today? Good. Thank you. I am excited because we are going to talk about an article just released this morning by Control Global. And this article is titled Think Big, Start Small, and Scale Fast. Makes sense. I like it. Let's do it. Yeah, so this article pretty much talks about how digital transformation is driven by people and processes and how we should only scale proven processes. What is your take on that? I think it's great. Um, I think it's definitely the right idea. Um, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're scaling an unproven process or a potentially really bad process and uh, doing all the damage that comes behind that, right? I think uh, there was an expression on um, my uh, accounting controller's uh, wall back when I first started my career, right? And the expression says, uh, to err is human, but to really screw things up, you need a computer, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> that before I love it. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to take bad processes to scale. Um, and I think that's the that's the lesson behind that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't know if you remember back in 2016, um, everybody was going crazy about the Google ne uh, Nest thermostat. Um, everybody mm -hmm. wanted a smart home. Uh, Next Nest uh, was very excited about it and pushed a new up the update to everybody, mind you, in the middle of winter. So this update left thousands of people without heat. And obviously the brand lost a lot of ground at that time. Yeah. It's what we're talking about. You need to test, test, and test before right. you push things out. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, ideally, I mean, I ideally, yeah, you would do something manually, right? On a small scale, low risk. Obviously, any type of change or any type of experiment comes at a cost, but you want to keep that cost to a minimum, right? To mm -hmm. to learn what you need to know. And that's the dangerous piece is sometimes people feel like they know, like beyond the benefit of a doubt. So it's just like go all out. Uh, but the reality is you you got to, you know, you got to be honest about what you know and what you don't know. Right. And assume you don't know. Assume the worst. And then um, and then test it manually, ideally. Now, there are exceptions to that rule. And in some cases, there are certain things you just can't test manually. Right. For example, you know, solar panels is a technology and it absorbs energy from the sun, right? That's not something you can manually do. You need to start with the tech. But the key in those cases also is, again, start small, right? Start small, prove it out, use the uh, scientific approach and uh, make sure you know beyond a fin of a doubt. And then once you, once you know and your tests all, you know, test out, objectively test out, then you scale gradually, right? Don't go from zero to a hundred or one to a hundred immediately. Uh, go from one to five, five to 15, 15 to 30, right? Kind of scale gradually and make sure that your solution has the capability of scaling uh, the way it, it still produces the, the result that you, that you intend for. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is why I think this article highlights that when, that when it comes to business transformation, Digital technologies are not the goal on themselves. Mm. They are just a means to an end. That's a great point. Um, and with with any change, you should have a an output or a goal or result in mind, right? And and ideally, it's a measurable, quantifiable goal. You know, if I buy this software, I should see an improvement in productivity. I should see an improvement in customer satisfaction. I see, should see an improvement in quality, et cetera. So if you start with a goal in mind, where, where do you want to be at some point in the future? Um, then you can use tech and uh, digital tools and even digital transformation as a whole as a means to that end. And um, everybody's talking about digital transformation. Everybody's talking about AI. Everybody's talking about these tech tools and you know, we get excited about shiny objects, you know, mm -hmm. myself included. Um, but you got you got to be objective about what this thing is supposed to do for you. And then, you know, continue to measure. Is it actually doing it? And if it's not, then you. Prepare to make the next change.
Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think, um, you know, one clear example of putting technology first, like considering the digital transformation to be the goal on itself, is this company called Fox Mayer. I don't know if that name sounds familiar to you, but this company was huge, a $5 billion company, the pharmaceutical distribution in the early 1990s. And they decided that they needed to implement, you know, automation and an SAP system all throughout their warehouses. And they went ahead and hired a consultant. And this was a $35 million project, okay? $35 million IT project. Massive, yeah. And they went ahead, head first, put it all in place. But guess what? The warehouse employees were not supportive because they thought all this automation was going to replace their jobs. So mm. they sabotaged the whole thing. And mm. on top of that, the company realized that the new system was a million light years just worse than the previous one. Yeah, so, right. They got, they got sold a limit. That's what, that, that's what you call it. <laughs> that's right. So yeah. the previous system was processing about um, like 420,000 orders, which is a lot. Yeah. And the new system for the price tag of $35 million was processing 10,000. Yeah, that is a probably mitigatable disaster. And again, just proves the point. You should probably have run a pilot and mm -hmm. made sure it can handle what you needed to handle and mm -hmm. on a smaller scale, make sure it can produce the results you, you want to produce. They could have easily taken taken one area of the warehouse mm -hmm. and piloted. They could have mm -hmm. taken one location potentially before cutting that $35 million check. And a lot of time what I see companies do is when they make such a huge investment in something, they, they then feel obligated to try to make it work. Mm -hmm. Right. And try to make it, you know, make it there. But I mean, you, you, you 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 go into something like that knowing what result or what outcome you're trying to produce, mm -hmm. and, and and then you 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 figure out uh, uh, first of all, can it do it right? Can the tech do what it said it says it can do? And then second of all, you know if you're close enough and it's more on the user side. Now, okay, uh, the other point I wanted to make here is oftentimes, and companies don't take this into enough consideration many times with digital transformation, is that Although on a spreadsheet, you might say, hey, we can reduce all these people. The implementation and the adoption of that solution and maybe even some of some of the feedback and engineering of that solution requires the participation and cooperation of the very people you might be looking to eliminate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a there's a political, I guess that's the politics of it, right? The, there's a political aspect of it that is. Um, you know, how do you introduce tech in a way where you're still showing respect for people, especially if you if you're dependent on their support and engagement? Mm -hmm. That's right. So, Calvin, let's say people understand that the goal is business and process transformation, not the digital transformation itself. Right. So yeah. they got their improvement efforts underway, which technology can help with. And then um, they could use something called a flywheel approach to drive and sustain that transformation. How does that flywheel approach look like? Yes. So the flywheel is mentioned in the article. And uh, I don't know exactly how they apply that concept, but but I've we use that concept with Improver also, the flywheel. And the way we do it, and I think the way we do it would apply here in this case as well, is... Um, again, everything starts with a goal and it's a, a measurable, quantifiable goal, right? And then you go, you start through your improvement cycles. It's almost like PDCA, essentially. You start through your improvement cycles. We usually encourage folks to meet at least once a week, in some cases, once a day, right? If it's, you know, more executive level, bigger, it takes more time to develop, you know, you can go monthly or even quarterly, but, you know, on some regular cadence, that's, that's as frequent as possible, Right weekly is is what we normally encourage. So 
Um, in those weekly sessions, though, what you're doing is just comparing where you actually are um, to where you want to be. And uh, from from each session, you should come out with a next thing to try, right, to improve results. So as you as you track towards your goal, uh, what companies do a lot in um, in not not ideally when it comes to tech adoption and tech acquisition is that they they buy the tech. Right. So somebody got to check a box saying I did it. I bought the tech. I'm done here. Right. Um, they don't necessarily have a goal in mind. And of course, if you don't have a goal, you don't have a way of saying or determining if that tech is helping you to meet your goal. Right. Over time. So ideally, what you do is you set a goal. You 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 know, I you know, understand where you are and then you determine the best solution that's going to help you reach that goal. Right. In, in theory, anyway. So. You approach the solution, start small, and then scale, of course. And then once you've implemented a solution, now you need to continue to optimize that solution, whether it's a technology or a piece of equipment, continue to optimize the performance until it's actually delivering what you need it to deliver, right? And uh, oftentimes that piece gets left out too. And that's where the flywheel comes in is it sort of keeps that that decision and that acquisition on your radar until it's performing to the level that you needed to perform in order to justify the acquisition. Otherwise, you might end up with a a, a technology that's only running at fifteen percent of what what you you know what you what you had calculated in the spreadsheet. So, uh, in in which case you're you're basically you know un, you know under under managing the business. So. Yeah. Uh, so it's not just, hey, get the get the machine or get the tech and you're done. It's get the tech. And now you got to spend some real time. I've heard it called a uh, hyper care, right? Hyper care implementation uh, to and, and stay in that mode until, you know, until you're getting the results you're looking for. And the flywheel can help do that. Yes. So let's summarize, Calvin. So we have focus on people and processes first. Then move on to technology and then keep your improvement going, going by using the flywheel approach. Is that a fair assessment? There you go. Keep it going and, and ensure that it's actually delivering to the level that you need it to, really. So, yeah. Um, I've, I've also heard that called early management or early maintenance or early management, right? It's It's not just getting it, but then... Uh, sticking with it until until it's up to 100%. All right. And with that, thank you so much for listening to the Ticket to Freedom podcast. Let's get better every day, and I'll see you again tomorrow. For daily news on operational excellence and how it relates to current events, check us out on the Ticket to Freedom podcast. Simply subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay up to date on the latest developments in continuous improvement.